Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Whiskey Throttle Show trailer. I am David Pinger, your host. I'm here with Grant Langston, who's our co-host. We got our producer, Donnie Bales, over here in the corner. Donnie? Hey, how's it going? Good, buddy. Good. Um, listen, this is our trailer for our show, not the first show. So if you're watching this going, this sucks, <laughs> um, just chill out. It's going to be all right. This is uh, an incomplete set. We just kind of wanted to share with you guys a little bit about what's going on, how this show came to be, what our goal is. Um, and I can tell you right now that it's just to have a good time and produce some content for you guys that I think is unique, not been done in this sport before, and uh, it's going to be fun. And it's, it's different. I don't think there's anything like this yet. Uh, we're, gonna, we're definitely breaking some ground on some things here. So, um, Grant, first of all, thanks for being a part of this show. Yeah, no, it's been awesome. Um, I think one of the things that uh, we've seen changing in, um, in you know, just the modern day era is podcasts are becoming the new sort of big thing that uh, people are going to. And, and our sport, you know, of motocross has grown um, over the years, and this seemed like a natural progression. And I think for someone like myself that now does the commentating for the Outdoor Nationals and, um, you know, when you had this idea with some great partners that we've got involved from sponsors, media partners with Racer X, it's, uh, to me, it was a no-brainer. I mean, I've been offered positions on shows before, but to me, this was one that really hit the spot, you know, with some of your ideas, my ideas, Donnie's ideas, and the people we've got involved. Uh, I think it's going to be excellent. And the, and, the, and the nice thing is, you know, even just so far when we've reached out to some of these athletes and we tell them what we're doing, they're like, yeah, that's I want to be on that show. This is something that I'd love to do. So we're going to get really in-depth, get to know our, our guests very well, as well as having some segments. We're going to have some good fun, some laughter. You'll have to see what we come up with. But uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And I think one of the, the coolest things that we'll, people will gain out of this is one will be a good time, especially at our live shows. That's a whole other story. That's going to be epic. Um, but really getting to learn and know people. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people know, like our first guest coming on, Roger DaCosta. They know he's nicknamed the man and he's a world champion from Europe. But no one really knows his in-depth story and how much he helped put motocross on the map in the U.S. So I think people are really going to get a kick out of stuff that uh, they probably never thought to ask before. But go, you know what, those are some good questions as well as keeping it lighthearted. And uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. Well, and, and the neat part about this to me, you know, instead of having on a bunch of different guests, we're going to focus, we're bringing one guest in for each show. And, and really the 90% of the focus of the show is about that guest. It's just going to be a long form interview with that one person. And as you mentioned, we're going to really get to know these people. And as we have started to lay out some of the guests, we've got Roger DeCosta coming on first uh, and Ricky Johnson coming in for our first live show on January 4th. That's going to be Friday night before a one. Um, but there's stuff about these guys, Roger in particular, that I don't know. And, yeah. and I'm anxious to learn this stuff. And I, I think if, you know, that's sort of my litmus test is, hey, if, if these questions and answers are going to interest me, I think they're going to interest any fan of the sport. You know, yeah. I, I can't remember. I've known Roger since 93. I've never heard him talk about his 500 World Championships. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, never. No, like, literally not uh, nothing. Yeah. You know? I think part of it is... No one's really sat down and get that whole story with him to begin with, which is what why we're going to be able to do that. Um, and the other thing is, he's a humble guy. He doesn't uh, like to talk too much about his success. But when you get him to open up and sit down a little bit, he, he is quite fascinating. I mean, the guy's been there, done that, got the T-shirt. And um, like you said, our second guest, Ricky Johnson, I mean, what a character he is, multi-time motocross, supercross champ. Uh, he's done it in all forms of racing, four wheels, um, his son's into, into racing as well, and, and just a great character to have. He's, he's going to be someone I think we'll have a good few laughs at. Oh, man. I, so he just went over to the, the Farley Castle Vet Motocross the Nations race with us. Where you were. Good and, time. Uh, I've been there. Yeah, I know you, you were there the year before. You did not get so lucky with weather. No, no, no. Typical English <laughs> yeah, weather. I, I had sunshine. Like, people were going, what is, where are you? That's not England. Thanks for rubbing I, it in. I see the sun shining. Uh, we had great weather, and Ricky is just, he is like, he walks on water. Uh, anywhere around the world. I mean, even in America here, but over there in Europe where they were, yeah. the, the, the media wasn't what it was, what it is today back then. They had to wait weeks to get a, a cycle news and see a little clip on Moto World like about the races. And Ricky yeah. was, man, he, he was a man among men um, and just almost like a deity over there. And so to watch these people lose their shit when he would come <laughs> out, you know, and, and did his parade lap. And my, my wife actually even said to me, she was, he's like Justin Bieber. And I started laughing. <laughs> I said, yeah, he's the Justin Bieber of motocross. So, Bad boy. Bad boy. Anyway, right. we're, we're going to have some fun with these guys. And um, 
I don't want to take the cover off the car before it's time to go racing, but just to give you some ideas, we, we do have a couple of little segments, like Grant said, it's going to be fun, uh, but we are going to focus more on the, the guest and really getting in depth with them, asking questions that either we don't know the answers to or things that we think people might be interested in hearing, personal lives, not just racing. I think yeah. that's sort of an issue that um, we get in this sport is when, when media outlets do interviews, it's five to 15 minutes. And you're typically, in, in that amount of time, you can only cover topical things like, hey, how was the race last week? Yeah. You know, what do you think coming up this weekend? Or It's all know. the basic fluff of, of the racing scene, not the trials, the tribulations, the road to getting there. Everyone's got a story of how, you know, no one just walked into a, a championship or walked into a factory ride. So getting to know those stories, everyone's story is different. My story is different coming from South Africa. Your story is different coming from Montana. So, you know, uh, we got people, and we're going to have guests from all around the world. We'll have some of our uh, um, some great guests as far as just getting um, a feel. And everyone's road's different. You know, we've talked about having Marvin Muska and coming on uh, a little further down the road. You've got, you know, French flavor. We're going to have, you know, a lot of people from a lot of the countries where I think just their stories being different or a little unique from maybe your Southern California lifestyle also throws in, a, you know, just a little bit of extra. Yeah, and it's definitely changed more, our, our sport. You know, it used to be you kind of had to live in Southern California in the, in the 80s. Um, from Bob Hanna on there for a while, everybody came out of El Cajon or, or the high desert here or whatever. And, boy, that couldn't be any more different now. You know, it's, it's literally yeah. if, you're, if you've got talent and drive and, and you're willing to do whatever it takes – you can get here from South Africa. Yeah, exactly. Well, you, you know, the <laughs> other thing we were saying too is obviously it's lovely that we got this uh, great studio here at the Troy Lee Barn, um, but getting guests and we have to figure out when some of our East Coast boys, you know, we talk about Florida being a big moto mecca, so when we're going to try and time when the guests are on the West Coast, we get them in. Uh, and another thing, we've both talked about this, when you have someone that comes in, the first five or six questions takes them to loosen up. Yeah. Once you get out of the fluff and you get into the real in-depth stuff, I think that's when people really get to feel like they know their guests, they, they got something out of the show, and go, wow, I didn't know that. Or oh, that was really interesting. Oh, that's yeah. cool. And we have two things going for us when it comes to that, to, to get through that fluff and really get into the meat and potatoes. And that is, one, we got as much time as we want. We, we're kind of setting aside 90 minutes for those interviews, but if it goes two hours, two and a half hours, I don't care. If it's interesting, we're yeah. staying. And the other part of that is we got free booze. <laughs> We are, we're going to be serving cold 805 beer that comes with uh, the uh, price of entry. And, and, of course, this is just for our live shows, um, which is something unique about this show as well. Not every show will be live in studio. And, and people will be able to follow us on social media and see some of the behind the scenes and the interaction and the games that we're going to be playing and the fun things that will happen. And uh, I'm pretty sure once people see that, too, they're going to be like, we've got to get to one of these live shows. Yeah. It, they, may, they may not want to leave. You guys have to be careful. Yeah, yeah exactly. They'll they have happens. sleeping bags all around <laughs> this place. Yeah. <laughs> Well, listen, uh, if you drink too much 805 beer and pass out, we will throw you in the back by the dumpster and lock up. <laughs> uh, but what we're going to do, just to give you a kind of an idea of the concept here, is, is probably one live show a month, and that could vary. We might have two. We might uh, you know, add one in, just depending on circumstances. Uh, but those shows will be open to the public. Uh, we're going to pack this studio, what we're calling the TLD Saloon. And all the proceeds will be going to a ch our favorite charity, Road to Recovery, that helps injured athletes in our sport, something that's close to our hearts. So... Yep, that's right. 100% of those proceeds. Um, we, we partnered with Road to Recovery on this to uh, try to do some good as well. And uh, those guys, were, they've helped everyone from Weston Pike more recently to uh, Phil Smage. I mean, who, you, you name it. Jesse Nelson. Jesse Nelson. Many, uh, many athletes. Button was kind of the start of their, their whole project. So uh, close, I think, near and dear to anybody who yeah. races hard. But uh, we're doing some good there. Uh, and, and also, this studio, you, you're really going to have to see it to believe it. This is not the finished set. Uh, when you see this in, uh, in our first show, it'll be a completely different deal. But we've got cornhole, we've got ping pong, like I said, a full bar, and it's a really cool bar. Great it, sponsors with, with setups yeah. and activations and demos and prizes and giveaways. I mean, there's really going to be a lot more to this than uh, will just meet the eye. Yeah, that's right. And, and speaking of our sponsors, just to kind of run through some of those people, uh, PowerDot is our title sponsor. And if you're not familiar with those, uh, it's a, an electric stim muscle stimulation device. and that you, It's portable. You can pack it anyway. It's yeah, discreet. We'll, 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 we'll get into showing them more yeah. of that as the show goes on. But just uh, it's incredible. And any top, any high-level athlete, it's, it's part of their um, training quiver. I mean, it's something that they use. If you don't, you're leaving something on the table for sure. Uh, Method Race Wheels is another big partner of ours. Those guys have just come on and are so stoked to be here. 
Uh, you'll be able to check out their full line of products. They sponsor the Troyley Designs KTM race team. Uh, Troyley Designs, obviously another big sponsor of ours. They're providing the studio here for us and doing a lot of work getting everything ready. Um, we've also got Decal Works. Uh, I work with those guys, not exclusively, but I would say 90% of the builds on our RacerX garage build segments. They are just <coughs> awesome to work with. These guys are professional, quick. The products are good. Um, it's so easy getting what, you know, what we need to get done out of those guys. If you're looking for a graphic and you have an idea, hey, I just, I like these colors or I want to do this. Boom, it's quite, it's quite amazing it what you can do now. Um, the customization side of it's just gone next level. That's right. And uh, so other sponsors, who do we got? Dunlop. Dunlop Tires, which, uh, I mean, let's just be, let's just be real. It's the best tire out there. Um, <laughs> they're the only brand that's been committed to this sport and continued to spend money to develop tires, to sponsor teams, to send Brock Glover and his crew to the race every single weekend to make sure the guys are happy, uh, to continue to improve those tires. They support amateur racing. Um, boy, even if it was a, a level playing field with all tires as far as performance goes, I'd be supporting a brand that's supporting the sport. Absolutely. 100%. So um, that's, our, that's our crew. It's pretty tight-knit. Um, and obviously, Race Rex is going to be media partners of ours. Um, you'll be able to check out all of our social media uh, but you'll be able to get links, not just on our website to the show, but also at RacerX. We'll have our own, uh, our own website, our own YouTube channel. Uh, so keep an eye on our social media for that. Uh, that's all going to be coming out pretty soon. Um, those St Stitcher, Spotify? Stitcher, Spotify, and iTunes. And you'll be iTunes. able to find it. And, uh, and the neat thing about our show as well is it's, it's multifaceted that way. You can listen to the podcast at any of those sites. You can go to our YouTube channel and watch a video, which will be edited and completed, just like what you're watching right now. Uh, if you're watching this on video. And, um, and then the live shows. Uh, like I said, we'll try to post those a month in advance so you can kind of see who's coming and what, what the dates are for those shows because the, the show dates will vary a little bit. I'm a, a fireman by trade, so my schedule shifts around a little bit. And, and fortunately, GL and Donnie here are both pretty flexible. So uh, <laughs> you're able to hop we don't We don't really work, so we're, we're well, good. Yeah. No job for me. Donnie's so. a made man. He's, he's a kept man. Yeah, kept, yeah. Uh, he's got his, uh, his wife who's I was going to know. He sends her off to work, and he comes and hangs out with that <laughs> smart man. We need yeah. to learn something from him. I know. This guy rides more than we do. Um, and then GL at Langston Motorsports there, you're able to jump out and, and come up and, and do this kind of on a pretty flexible schedule. Yeah, exactly. So that makes it nice. Um, I'm excited, man. I'm, I'm Yeah. Who, who do you think you're looking forward to? I, I was talking to uh, Mitch Payton the other day about s some possible guests, and he mentioned one to me, and I thought, oh, man, we got to book this guy. He says, you need to get Malcolm Smith on the show. Yeah. And I thought, oh, talk about a guy who's got some stories. I mean, how many people did Malcolm Smith get into motorcycle racing? Yeah. He, he's he's created Sunday? history for this sport. He's created the history for this sport. I, I think maybe he, he's more iconic maybe than any other racer ever. Yeah. He's... Um, I mean, he's pretty much kept the Husky name alive. They've still ran that off of uh, the Malcolm Smith days, I mean, from yeah. any Sunday. And, uh, no, Malcolm's a great guy. He also owns his own dealership. And we're actually right next to each other, so indirectly we're competition. But great guy. I mean, we do dealer trades. We work together. And he'd be someone cool because that could be one of your two-and-a-half-hour podcasts you're talking oh about gosh. because he's got stories from Steve McQueen days to yeah. – uh, Hey, I do that Saboba trail ride every, and up until a few years ago, he was riding that. that well, how, how old do you think Malcolm is? Uh, I, I don't. Eighty? I don't. Yeah. He's yeah. I think he's eighty. But I'm telling you, he he was riding those. Oh, those, that's awesome, man! That's those so cool. Saboba you're not, trail ride. You're not even allowed to go out there unless you know Malcolm. Right. <laughs> you yeah. can't yeah. ride on the yeah. Indian reservation yeah. unless you know or with yeah. Malcolm. Yep. Well, and there's a. I, I used to work up in Lake Arrowhead, and there's a trail called the Malcolm Smith Trail. Yeah. Uh, it's an off-road loop up yeah, there. Yeah, I've been on that one. I mean, when you've got trails named after you. You're doing you something right. Yeah, you definitely <laughs> accomplished something. So, anyway, uh, pretty stoked about what's coming. But also, speaking of guests, real quick, we are looking at doing guests that are obviously retired or past legends, as well as current races. And then, you know, we want to bring in some of the, the youth, the next level, hear from the kids what it's like growing up, um, possibly being homeschooled, uh, where they decide at age nine you're going to be a pro one day. Um, things have changed. You know, we, we, we even laugh and joke sometimes about how simple it was when we grew up yeah. and how scientific it's become. But I think to uncover those stories is going to be fun as well. I, I agree. Um, these, these young guys like Ryder DeFrancesco and, and uh, even some of the younger kids, younger than him now, uh, to hear their story about what's home life like, what's a typical day like. Uh, I worked with Styles Robertson a little bit when he was um, on mini bikes. 
And the way he did it, you know, his grandparents were taking him riding, and they're from Bakersfield, so he'd, dr- he'd drive all the way down here with them. And we'd go out and ride all day long, you know, and they'd, it's just, it's crazy compared to what I did. I, I mean, I rode I've a couple times seen... a week. If I, if I got my homework done, yeah, and yeah, I got the bike clean yeah. and filters cleaned, my dad would take me to the track for the last two hours of daylight. Yeah, daylight. Yeah, ride right till you, you know? couldn't see Yeah, it. and you had to get good grades, right? You couldn't oh, yeah. just, you couldn't oh, yeah. just show Listen. up. Well, that's where it got funny in my family because my mom's like, his grades are down. He's not riding. You're grounded. And my dad's like, yeah, yeah, you're grounded, but, but we're going straight to the track and straight home. We're not doing anything fun. <laughs> well, so my dad, uh, he called my bluff on that one year because he would always threaten, you better keep yep. your grades up or, or this is all done, this little gravy train, you know. And I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, you know. He threatened that all the time. And my grades were pretty good for the most part. I hit seventh grade and really got into uh, the opposite sex and yep. uh, started losing some focus in algebra class and brought That's home. weird. Usually guys really focus <laughs> on the algebra, you know? <laughs> and uh, anyway, you I didn't was, lose focus. You just changed yeah. focus. This was a midterm. It wasn't even a report card. It was just like a midterm, but I had a D minus. And Bob Pingree lost his mind, sold all my bikes, sold the trailer that we had. He's like, we're done. You're done. This isn't working. I'm not. There's no way I'm allowing you to bring home these grades. So, you know, prove to me that you can pull it together. and then I'm we'll sure see. you got your grades back up. They came right back up. Yeah. And you know, okay. as, as tough as that was, I mean, I was stunned and like in tears, but man, I, I thank him all the time for doing that because it, it, it kept me focused even when I didn't want to be yeah. keeping my grades up. And it, and it, that led to, you know, for me, careers after motocross from writing to commentating to, you know, firefighting. I mean, and paramedic school is not easy. So no. uh, the, it, me being focused on school during that time kind of taught me how to study and learn and be um, able of able to do those things now. So anyway, appreciate it now. Yeah. I mean, for, for me, it was traveling and trying to get some schoolwork. And um, once I went to Europe, my mom was not happy because I didn't finish high school. So um I, I, I may have lied and said that I was going to do some form of schooling and get my <laughs> diploma in Europe somewhere. And that was just so I could get on the plane without, without uh, whippings across my buttocks. Yeah. And uh, once I left, it was just my focus was racing. And um, once I got to Europe, it was like a whole other big world, man. And same thing, my focus turned a little bit as well because I was 15 and mom wasn't around. It was like, you know, cage tiger just being released. And I was like, yeah, Euro chicks are crazy. Yeah. <laughs> well, you made it. You're one of the few who actually didn't finish school, took that risk, and it paid off. Not that I would suggest other kids doing that because well, we've seen it work, not work out more times oh, than, than not. So. It's very few guys that get that done. So you were one of the lucky ones or talented ones. Or, you know, I don't want to say it was Bit lucky. of both. Yeah. Who knows? Well, listen, uh, this is, like I said, not a full show, just a little trailer to give you an idea of what's coming. Uh, our first show will be posted December 21st. That's going to be with Roger DeCoster. It's going to be epic. We've got some really fun stuff. Like I said, I don't want to give it away yet, but some really cool stuff coming up. And um, tune in. Check it out. Uh, I, I'm a podcast guy, but if you like video, check out our YouTube channel. And if you're anywhere near Southern California for Anaheim 1, go to Road, Road to Recovery. The tickets are for sale right now. Uh, you can buy tickets to come see the live show with Ricky Johnson. That's going to be a good time. Yeah, RoadToRecovery.com. They have a link. Like we said, just 20 bucks all goes to, to Road to Recovery. Right, help, and, besides, and besides coming here and have a good time, you're really giving to something that's worth it. And yeah. we'll get a mingle. There'll, there'll be other people. I mean, you, you're probably going to bump into guys like Troy Lee and, and other people that are of significance just hanging out, enjoying the show, having some beers. It's going to be a cool event. A little bit of a late-night show feel but more interactive with the crowd, more socializing, uh, more activations. Uh, and, and if we flip this camera around one evening, you'll see the kind of cool stuff that's just in this warehouse that uh, there's, a lot, there's a lot to do. Yeah, and before the show starts, there's going to be two hours of just playing ping pong, playing cornhole, having some drinks, Meeting chilling, talking. RJ's going to be cruising around. Troy will be cruising around. It's going to be a chance to really come and, and interject yourself into the sport in a way you've never been able to do before. So join us for that. Uh, Donnie, thank you. Yep. Anything you need to add from the dorky Apple computer over there? No, no. I just, uh, I'm just, I enjoy that more than watching you guys. That is so. a sexy computer. I'm yeah, not no, going to lie to you. Yeah. You see this? It's I about d- as big as your TV at home. I, well, that's what I was about to say. I didn't I'm know watch- they make computers I'm in, watching in like an 80-inch right screen. <laughs> I got Netflix going here. I'm not listening to you guys. I'm just... Uh, GL, thank you. I'm looking forward yeah. to this. This is going to be a lot of fun. Be sure to tune in December 21st to the very first Whiskey Throttle Show. We'll see you then.